Hi, uh, this is Rick Scott. I'm a senator from the great state of Florida. Human rights, uh, democracy, freedom, uh, peace in Latin America is very important to so many people that, that live in my state. Berta, the biggest thing I want to say is thank you for what you do every day. And I wish you the best as you fight for human rights, for freedom, liberty, and peace in Nicaragua. First, Bernie, if you could tell us some of the challenges you're facing in Nicaragua. Thank you, Senator Scott, for your words and your support. And thank you for your question. Nicaragua, sadly, is no longer a democracy, but a dictatorship. In the last year, President Daniel Ortega has solidified his role in the country by passing repressive laws, disqualifying all credible opposition parties, eliminating independent media, and closing civic space. Most shocking is that Ortega disappeared and detained more than 40 opposition leaders, journalists, and activists, including the seven leading presidential candidates. One of them, my husband, Felix Maradiaga. Felix was called to the public ministry on June 8 and was disappeared by Nicaraguan's National Police for 84 days. Their trials now have been suspended, so they remain detained indefinitely and held incommunicado for weeks at a time. With all of the opposition in prison, the Ortega regime held the so-called election on November 7. And Daniel Ortega proclaimed himself president for the fourth consecutive term. After six months of arrest and disappearance, the Nicaraguan people live every day in fear. Six months ago, we were facing severe challenges to our democracy, but now we have seen what happens when the world fails to take strong actions, that democracy can be lost and became a dictatorship. So what actions can be done to support um, the fight for freedom and democracy in Nicaragua? There is much that the international community can do to support Nicaraguan people as we fight to restore democracy and human rights to our country. First, democracies must continue to demand the immediate and unconditional release of more of the more of 170 political prisoners in Nicaragua, including my husband, Felix Paradiaga. Second, democracies throughout the world must take coordinated action to respond to Daniel Ortega's stealing of the November 7 elections where no opposition candidates was even allowed to appear in the ballot. The international community has condemned the election as illegal, but after January 10th, Daniel Ortega will be an illegitimate president and the international community must refuse to recognize him. Third, democracy should demand new, fair and transparent election to be held immediately and let me just conclude with, with one broader and critical point. The strongest dictatorship of the world, such as China, Russia, and Iran, are working strategically and intentionally to support weaker regimes like Venezuela, Cuba, Syria, and Nicaragua, with money and tools to maintain their grip on power. Unless the democracies of the world come together and make major investments to challenge these global systems, not just in developed regimes one at a time, I think there is no way that we can prevail. Senator Scott, um, I can't emphasize how important it is for the United States to stand with people who are sick in democracy and human rights around the world. It is this kind of support that gave us courage to face serious threats to our lives and liberty. Why do you feel the US must and how should it best help lead the world in supporting the, democr uh, the democratic aspirations of people suffering under authoritarianism regimes? I think, I think that first off, if the United States doesn't lead, no one's going to help us. If the United States doesn't focus on what's going on in Cuba and Nicaragua and Venezuela, I mean, nobody else is going to do anything about it. So one, every everybody in the United States, every leader, everybody that has a pulpit needs to be very vocal. We've got to demand uh, in no uncertain terms the release of all pol political prisoners. we got to demand new free and fair elections. We need to do the exact same thing in Cuba and, and, and Venezuela. 
Um, we've got to we've got to humanize uh, the the situation. Uh, talk about exactly what's happening to your family and other families. We got to talk about what's happening to the citizens, and then on top of that, we've got to sanction. We've got to quit allowing uh, or take it, have it, any resources. We need to do the same thing with Cuba and, and Venezuela. Make sure these thug dictators don't have any resources to be able to uh, take away rights against their citizens. Thank you, Senator. And, and thank you also for your support and, and your voice. What message would you like to send to civic activists and freedom fighters like me and my colleagues in Nicaragua? A pueblo de Nicaragua, no están solos. Estoy con ustedes en esta lucha. Florida está con ustedes en esta lucha. Los Estados Unidos están con, están con ustedes en esta lucha. Juntos veremos un nuevo día de libertad para Nicaragua, Cuba y Venezuela. The big thing uh, going forward is always tell me what you think I can be doing because um, I'm, I'm dedicated to making sure in Nicaragua and Venezuela, Cuba and all across Latin America and anywhere I can have an influence around the world that people get to live in the same freedom that we all want to live in in this country.